people in Haifa said, you know, we had all these demonstrations over the summer in Haifa. We didn't go to Tel Aviv for the social justice protest. Why not also have a human rights march in our own city? Uh, obviously, we could not have said no. Um, so you lose control. That's also part of what's, what's happening. You lose control in a good way. Um, and when we recall that one of the strategic goals that we had is that people will feel direct ownership of human rights, then this is one of the ways in which that success expresses itself. And finally, uh, the final example is how this complicates, for instance, our relationships, uh, well, not complicates, but adds a new layer uh, to our relationship with, uh, with, for instance, the police in, in Israel. Uh, so far, we were used to be addressing the police on two levels. One is through our educational work. Uh, our education department uh, work in training courses of police officers in Israel on a variety of issues. So that's you know one way we are used to communicate with the police. The other way we're used to communicate with the police is through uh, litigation uh, in various situations where the police are misconducting and especially when it relates to policies that we aim to change, then it's a very controversial uh, engagement. Um, but now with the Human Rights March, there's also another layer of engagement with, uh, with the police. And in that we are clients. Uh, it's a demonstration, it's happening in Tel Aviv. Streets need to be closed. Uh, police needs to escort the, the event. There's also communication that is happening directly on that, on that level. And also similarly with, uh, with the municipality in, in Tel Aviv, um, we believe, I think it should be quite obvious, that the public shouldn't have to pay in order to hold a demonstration. The city of Tel Aviv believes differently and if you want to hold a demonstration in one of the three major squares of Tel Aviv, <coughs> there is actually a fee. Uh, but if you want to go somewhere else, that's fine. You don't need to pay. Uh, so this is now being litigated in, in, in Israel, uh, but that case is, is pending. So in the meantime, also there is an accumulation of um, um, documents and letters going back and forth between us and the city of Tel Aviv over the fact that we're holding the annual human rights rally in one of those squares that actually requires a fee and we you know <coughs> reach some sort of an agreement with the city uh, with the term that we will be refunded uh, once that case is decided uh, hopefully decided uh, appropriately so that freedom of speech would not be dependent uh, on one's economic ability uh, to pay the quite high fee that the city is uh, is demanding so that added layer also was happening there in the in the march um, so december 9 uh, the third annual human rights march in the, in tel aviv it's always very very tense those kind of events in tense in ways that don't directly relate to you know human rights civil liberties work you know what the weather is going to be like how many people are going to show up all of those things you know are Part of uh, part of what takes takes place. We were lucky with the weather yet again. Clearly, uh, the gods are with with human rights, um, and and eventually, and I want to conclude with uh, with this, is that dilemma that we have been with throughout that dilemma of certain issues that are more popular and more broadly supported, like the social justice protest over the summer in Israel that had, you know, I mentioned 80% in support of democracy in some, some sort of uh, meaning, but, you know, the social justice protest in Israel we had like 87% support. So very popular and obviously we are for all of those issues, but at the same time also issues that people don't want to discuss, don't want to address the other injustices of, uh, of society. And as I said, we insisted that it is inconsistent to have a democracy in Israel uh, and a military occupation uh, beyond, beyond the Green Line. And we insisted on all of those other forms and fashions in which there are injustices in our, in our society. And if any of us needed a reminder of how related these things are, 
And then here's what followed during the very weekend of the Human Rights March in, in Tel Aviv. So Friday afternoon, that's the time of the, of the march. In, in, yes, in, in, in Tel Aviv. Um, and that's also the time in which uh, the weekly demonstrations in some villages in the occupied territories take place, Friday around noon. And we insisted that one of the messages at the march in Tel Aviv would be a message from the occupied territories. Um, so um, we read at, at the march a speech in, in English, it was translated from Arabic to English, by uh, Nariman Tamimi from the village of Nabi Saleh. Um, and you know, that's a village where both Acre and B'Tselem have a joint project uh, helping the struggle for, uh, of the village in the context of our work of freedom of protest in the occupied territories, which doesn't exist in the occupied territories, freedom of protest. And um, so a short time after her very powerful speech was read, and I recommend to all of you to look online later, the speech is on YouTube, and it's, it's very much worth uh, listening to very powerful speech by a very courageous woman. And, you know, a short time after that, the weekly demonstration taking place in Nabi Saleh, uh, yet more clashes between demonstrators in the village and, and the IDF. And uh, one of the demonstrators, uh, Mustafa Tamimi, at that demonstration uh, was hit by a tear gas projectile shot by an IDF soldier, uh, critically wounded. Uh, and he died in the hospital the, the following day, which happened to be International Human Rights Day. He died on, uh, on December 10th. So for anyone that you know, has any uh, questions with regard to how interconnected those struggles against injustices are, uh, then that was a very sobering moment.